how are you doing? I hope you're good on this very sunny Friday. I hope your week has gone smoothly. I hope you've got some lovely plans, whatever they may look like, um, for the weekend that you're looking forward to. Today is um, part five of this series that I've been talking about all week. And I've really loved um, sharing these different parts. Um, so look out for more of these type trainings. And today in part five of moving the needle in your business and your brand, the word that I am kind of umbrellaing this, hello, is about communication and being very clear about what you want, what you're available for, where you're going. And I understand that those are all quite big questions. And sometimes that pressure to have all of those answers is just way too much. So today I'm hopefully going to give you some journal points or some things to ponder whilst you're making a cup of tea and those small tweaks that you can make to just move that needle a little bit. I was talking with um, another mum on the way back from the school run today and we were talking about those people that we've maybe all met that are almost focused on the wrong things. So I was talking about somebody um, being in a casting room, for example, and they're the, always the person that comes in late or something hasn't happened or they didn't get the script or something's gone on. And maybe in their belief system, they believe that they're being noticed, that they are being memorable. But my view is always like, you've been memorable for the wrong reasons. Like you're just being that person who showed up late and didn't have the script and all of that kind of stuff. And she was also talking about somebody that she knows who has this um, real need to show how busy they are. So like, you know, they're speaking on loudspeakerphone, everybody can hear the call, they're up and down from the table the whole time. And I was really noticing what that did and where that kind of shows up. And when we think about what we're going for and our goals and what's next for us, it can feel scary. That change can feel, oh, like it gets us in the pit of our stomach, like, oh gosh, I really want it, but I think it's, it's wow, it feels, a, it feels a long way away, or I don't know how I'm going to do that, or it just feels a lot. So what I want to give you are some things that you can check in, and some of them you'll hear from friends in Rachel Green saying them, but notice what your communication is. So for example, do you actually know what you want? Do you know what you're moving towards? And when you start your day, do you have that really strong, powerful destination in mind of where you're trying to get to? You see this sometimes on travel documentaries where people have been traveling around the world and they pick a point in the map and they go, right, today we need to do 200 miles in order to get there. Do you have that for your business or your life? Do you know what the next stage is? And this isn't the five year, this isn't the 10 year plan necessarily. This could be until the end of September. This could be for the month of October, between now and Christmas. It could be any of those things. So is that vision really clear in your mind? Do you know what it is that you're aiming for? Secondly, do you know what your why is? Why are you doing all of this? And there've been certain times, especially in my, well, in all of the elements of my career, where I've doubted or I've questioned whether it's gonna be worth it, whether all the hard work is gonna pay off, whether I'll ever get a lucky break or whether I will get a job. And then suddenly you turn a corner and you're like, ah, oh, oh, it happened, okay, great, oh, lovely, yeah, something's happened, something's changed. and. Um, you know, the industries that I've chosen, uh, they do keep you guessing sometimes, I have to say. But knowing what your why is, knowing why you're doing this, will help focus that end point. Because that emotion and that vision will work beautifully hand in hand, like a salt and pepper type moment. Like, okay, I know where I'm going and I know why I'm doing it. The third thing is... What are the steps 
that are actually going to get you there. And knowing what those are, are really important. I often say this on the podcast, I have no interest in just being busy. I do not want to be one of these people. And I have been, I have been those people who meet people in the street and go, hi, yeah, sorry. Oh, I'm just dashing. Oh gosh, yeah, I've got to run back. I've been that person. My fifth decade, which I'm about to go into, is not about that life. Yes, I want to thrive. Yes, I want to um, really excel and expand. But I also want to be really present. I really want to be really grounded. I really want to be in that moment. So knowing what those steps are, and sometimes they're not always practical. Sometimes they are mindset shifts. Sometimes it's therapy. Sometimes it's healing. Sometimes it's really looking at what this thing is that's holding me back and doing that work and doing that really uncomfortable work and sitting with it and pulling it apart and reframing and all kinds of kind of coachy work, I would say, or therapy work. So I have to know each and every day why I'm doing what I'm doing in terms of those tasks, perhaps, that I'm writing on my list and making sure that they're justifying my time at my desk and they're going to get me closer. So I want to ask you, in terms of your communication, to go back to that word again, are you communicating clearly to other people and to yourself what it is that you want or what this next chapter looks like? And I realize this I mean not so much anymore because we've just been together for so long but you know early in this relationship this relationship like it changes every week early in my current relationship or in other relationships that I'd been in previously sometimes there can be this assumption that people can read your mind and um, you see this in relationships sometimes of going, well, like I gave you that eye contact and like I was nodding and smiling and why didn't you pick up on that cue? And I feel like this is um, the case in terms of our goals and in terms of what we are trying to do next is we can't assume that other people are mind readers. That being said, it's important to protect your boundaries. I always talk about this as in don't share something with somebody until you feel like it's going to be in safe hands or you feel in a good place with it. So you might get a business idea. This is not the moment to go, hey guys, on the family WhatsApp group and just kind of share it with everybody. Be really discerning. Sometimes you might need to hold an idea back. Sometimes you need to give it a bit more thought and attention and incubate it and really take care of it. So when you're thinking about your next steps, and moving this needle, who is it that you would like to support you? Or who could you work with? Or who knows the answer that you're looking for? Equally, in your communication, are you showing that you are ready? And I actually wrote a book about this in 2014 called Be Ready For Your Lucky Break. Because I tell you what, you, and I've seen it, I've seen it so many times, it's mind blowing sometimes where the opportunity comes, the perfect moment that, oh my goodness, this is the meeting I've been waiting for. And the person is not ready because they think it's going to come in another way or something's going to happen or all of that stuff kind of gets in the way. So that communication and being linked to your why and your goals and why you're doing all of the things, you have to find those ways that you are ready to have more than that or to move more along the path in order to get you where you want to go. So this could be how you're spending your time. Are you spending your time in ways that's going to support you and moving forward? Are you consistently questioning your own thinking? Are you really looking at what's going on for you? I know that very quickly sometimes I can have a thought and I catastrophize. I go to the end point, like I'm sliding down the whole thing. I spiral, I go, you know, and this is all like within naught to 10 seconds where I'm like, oh yeah, I'm a bit worried about that. And it kind of goes, um, yeah, to that kind of big crazy place that I don't want to be in. And I've learned that over the 
years that my moving the needle to support that and go, no, no, it's all right, is to do that grounding stuff, is to do that, take a minute, take a breath, breathe. How do you feel now? What's happening now? What are you worried about? How can you set yourself up in this scenario? How can you support yourself? Take a minute, breathe. So that's what my process looks like in a, in a second. In, and sometimes it's just having those anchors of looking around going, it's okay, I'm at home, like everything, okay. And take a minute and breathe. So those moments um, and those tools, I guess, have been really useful. Equally, are you spending your time talking in a way that you know you're ready for that opportunity? Or are you spending those valuable conversations with people? And this is not about being um, not authentic or anything like that. But the number of times that I've seen, especially in the acting industry, where people go up to a casting director and they tell them the most boring, convoluted story, instead of thinking, this is such a great opportunity for me to be in a conversation with those. And I just think, oh, it's just such a waste um, because there are so many other things that you could talk about. But again, maybe that could be a self-sabotage. But I just want you to watch yourself from a distance and make sure the things, the conversations the attitudes, the flavors, the the way you are showing up in life are aligned with what you want to be, do and have in life. Because we get to decide right now. We get to decide whether we move forward. We don't have to play that board game where we have to wait for a six before we can move. Like, no, you don't even have to roll the dice. You can decide right now you can start to be very deliberate about what it is that you want, why you want it, and what you need to do in order to get there. And the final thing I want to say is be open to what it is that you need or the support or the way that you can action this. The reason that I'm saying is this is that old phrase of what's got you here won't get you there. It's absolutely true. There are certain things that we have, um, you know, even if we look at ourselves of my son is in year one now, what he needs in his bag, what tools, what skills, what bits of his personality he needs in order to excel in year one are very different if I was dropping him at university for the first time. It's a different skill set. Equally, if you are making change, if you are making moves in your life or your business, it might need a different skill set. It might need a different set of thoughts. It might need you getting up an hour earlier. It might need some additional practices. I heard this a while ago as well. Like as soon as your um, money goes up, your needs go up and your self-care goes up. They all have to work together. You can't just suddenly go, right, I'm just going to work harder and I'm going to get all of these things. You're going to need more. You're going to need the flip side of this, basically. You're going to need the rest. You're going to need the recuperation. You're going to need that reflection time and you're going to need that strategy. So lots to think about today. Also, one final thing is really notice how well you're doing and I know everybody, and I I do it myself, I don't always write it down, but I certainly do take a moment, especially in those busy times or if I'm feeling overwhelmed, to count my blessings and really think about the gratitude and what I'm grateful for and where, you know, life is really great and stay in that headspace. Also notice those brilliant things that you're doing. You know, my daughter learned the word yellow the other day and we were in Sainsbury's and it just brought me so much joy because there's so much yellow in Sainsbury's and she was just shouting it, yellow, yellow. And I just thought she couldn't say yellow yesterday and now she's saying it and now she's just like, she has yellow in her life. She could recognize the color beforehand But the joy that she was experiencing was just amazing. So really notice all those small things. Because I tell you what, like even sharing that story, it made me smile. Imagine like building up those blocks, building up all of those little things to build up the picture of where you go next. Wherever you can, do that. I know it's hard at the moment. I know there's all sorts of stuff going on. But wherever you can, try and find that brightness in your picture if you can. If you would like to join me next week, I am doing a full 
CEO day um, where you can come as part of a group. Uh, it's all online. It's four sessions. And um, yeah, I'm really excited to share this. It's called Jam and Plan Live. It's one of my favorite events to hold. All the details I will leave in the description box. You also get a week of accountability. So if you know you want to make some moves and you want to do all of those things, then let me support you. Um, yeah, with that, you get a week of email support, then catch up sessions, all kinds of good stuff. But do check out the link, nikkiraby.com forward slash jam and plan live. Right, I'm going to go and eat my lunch. Thank you for being with me today and for all week. Everything's recorded and um, yeah, I'll see you next week for more good stuff. All right, lots of love. Bye.